Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. And we are back again for one final Project Playtime Lost Bits video, and this is one of the most exciting videos I've made on the series, at least I think so. So basically, the whole bunch of internal files got leaked from the developers, and amongst these files are some really early videos and graphics that give us an awesome behind-the-scenes look into the earlier stages of Project Playtime's development. We're talking unused graphics, hidden image layers, unused mechanics, and a whole bunch more. Now for legal reasons, I don't think I can show everything that was leaked, so I kind of have to tread lightly here, but yeah, like I mentioned, I'll mostly just be focusing on the behind-the-scenes aspects that were leaked. So with all that said, huggy wuggy that like button, let's dive into some more Project Playtime Lost Bits. Now really quick, before we get to the behind the scenes goods, I just want to go over a few things I forgot to mention in my previous video in regards to some more stuff left over unused in the files of the game. First, I went over a whole bunch of currently unobtainable cosmetics, but there are a few more that, just like the cosmic hands that I mentioned, only have text references remaining, so we don't really quite know what they're gonna look like besides speculating based on their name. So for the grab packs, there are three unused variants, each which just have a blank icon graphic, a fish tank, a rainbow pack, as well as a galaxy grab pack, I guess to go with the cosmic hands I mentioned in my previous video. But yeah, although all three of these technically do have icon graphics, they unfortunately are just blank. Then speaking of the rainbow pack, there's also a pair of files referencing rainbow skins for both Huggy as well as Boxy. And much like the packs, unfortunately the one for Huggy Wuggy just defaults to his normal blue fur here. So yeah, I guess maybe these just weren't quite ready yet to be put in the game. Next up, this image isn't actually found in the files, but it was shared by one of the developers in the game's Discord server, and here we have this screenshot of several players in the game, I assume testing out the multiplayer features. And if it wasn't obvious already, everyone here opted to complete the Walter White look. What's even more interesting about this image though is that almost all of the players are using the fabled flipping the bird emote that I originally discussed back in my Chapter 2 videos of Poppy Playtime. In my recent videos on Project Playtime, I've went over how this middle finger emote has seemingly been cut from the game, but as of whenever this screenshot was taken, I guess it was still in play. I assume this emote was removed because it might have been deemed too offensive to their targeted younger demographics, but who knows, maybe one day we'll see this make its way back into the game. And lastly for the graphics left over, in the current release we have some early UI test graphics as well as several thumbnail graphics meant for the level select screen that seem to show off a few unused early levels. As a small side note, I distinctly made plans to show these off in my last video, so I have no idea how I forgot. But anyways, first are several images seemingly testing out the user interface and heads up display graphics for stuff like the pause menu and winning a game. And we can see that for these, the devs just used a screenshot from Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 as a placeholder to, I guess, test how these graphics would look during gameplay. Another interesting screenshot here shows off an early background for the menus as well as an early blank version of the Survivor. But the most interesting part of the screenshot shows off a currently unimplemented mechanic of, I guess, saving presets of customized outfits. This would be extremely handy to be able to save some sets that you like, to be able to quickly swap between them instead of having to reselect every part every time. I really hope they end up adding this to the game. And now lastly, like I mentioned earlier, there are several level select thumbnail graphics that appear to show off some early levels that were cut. In addition to what looks like the final thumbnail used for the Toy Factory map as well as the upcoming Steel Mill map that I mentioned in my first video, we also have some test maps featuring a wall cut out of what looks like one of the survivors, a dark night themed outdoors map with a tire swing, an indoor area with a bunch of shelves, a cheery indoor train station like area that really gives me FNAF security breach daycare vibes, there's an area that looks like a golf course, an early thumbnail for the theater map, as well as a graphic for the dev test map that we explored in my first video. In that video I also mentioned how map 1 was the toy factory and map 7 was the theater, so now we can see what all the other stages in between were developed as. Currently as I make this video it only looks like the steel mill is coming in the near future, but hopefully some of the others get added in too, a golf course and dark outdoor map sound awesome. Alright, now let's move on to the main part of this video, the Project Playtime Giga Leak. 
I'm not sure who originally leaked this folder, but it has a whole bunch of stuff from clean Photoshop files of a bunch of artwork and posters seen in the series, some fonts, logos, and of course, like I mentioned, several videos which we'll be mostly looking at later in this video. Also, I've had a few people reach out to me over the last few days asking if this leak is legitimate, and seeing which email addresses were associated with this Google Drive folder, I can assure you this is 100% a legit leak. So first up here, found in the folder for character assets are several reference images and videos showing a 360 degree view of a bunch of the characters from the Poppy series. It seems like every character has the front and side profile images, but only Bunzo Bunny, Huggy, Kissy Missy, Mommy Longlegs, and PJ Pugapillar have the 360 degree view. These were, and I guess still probably are, likely used as references for artists making new drawings of these characters for posters and merch and such. Also found amongst these character assets is this render of Mommy Longlegs, Bunzo, as well as PJ, three of the antagonists that you see in Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. Now at first glance, this may not seem like anything special, but both Bunzo and PJ here have a unique bloody look that they are never seen with in the game. In one of my older videos, I mentioned how in the beta, PJ did use a bloody texture, but this was changed in the final version, and I guess it looks like maybe Bunzo was once planned to have a few stains as well. Then next up, there's a folder with a whole bunch of the posters seen in the Playtime Co. Factory throughout the series. Now again, at first glance, these posters might not seem like that much of an interesting thing to talk about here, but some of them actually hide some pretty interesting things in their Photoshop files. For instance, in this poster of Cat B and Candy Cat hanging onto a branch, we can find some hidden original line art where we can see a sketch of Candy Cat with a much shorter tongue than how it's seen in the final version of the poster. Then, arguably even more interesting, found hidden in some layers in a few other posters like this one of BoogieBot, there are several instances of what looks like reference images used for making these posters. There's a very old poster of a Toys R Us parade of stars, and then there's some comic book cover art for Casper and Wendy, Weird Tales of Terror, Horrific, as well as everyone's favorite, Little Sad Sack. But yeah, I guess the artists use these images as references and inspiration for making the Poppy Playtime posters in the style of comics and toys of decades past. Another interesting thing is that we can also find some old sketches here, one of Braun, as well as this old sketch of what eventually became a poster of Kissy Missy. I thought it was pretty cool to see this artwork at such an early stage before it was finalized. And one last thing found in the posters folder that I want to go over here is a file titled Poster Backsides. Now, at first I was like, wait, you never end up seeing the backsides of any posters in the game. And then it hit me. Wait, there's no way that these were part of the NFT deposit. Yup, that's exactly what these are. One of the biggest controversies this series has faced was the introduction of these NFTs. And yeah, I now literally just have the Photoshop file of them. Wild. Then next up, found in the root folder of the leak are a pair of interesting images that I don't think I've seen anywhere else. The first of these is a poppy flower, similar to what's seen at the end of chapter 1 when getting to the poppy room, but interestingly, this one has a creepy eye at the center. It almost kind of looks like Cracko, a boss from the Kirby series. Then next is a large image of the Playtime Company factory listed as LP Banner. Now at first I thought this was just an early placeholder version of the chapter 1 background like we saw in my previous videos, but then I started seeing some numbers and I realized there was more to this image than meets the eye. Around the factory you can find the numbers 9, 14, 6, 5, 18, 14 again, 21, and 13. And following the pattern that we recently saw in Bendy and the Dark Revival, this is an incredibly easy cipher where a number directly equals a letter in the alphabet known as the A1Z26 cipher, A being 1, B being 2, and so on. So if we decode this message, the following word can be revealed, Infernum. And Infernum is a Latin word that apparently translates to underground, depths of the earth, or of course, hell. Now this message is really contrasting with the cheery nature of the rest of this image, but I guess that's what the whole series is about here. Alright, and now for the real good stuff, there's a folder in the leak titled simply BTS. And we ain't talking K-pop here, but this folder contains a metric boatload of behind the scenes videos and images, often giving us a really cool peek into the development of this game. First up, let's talk about the images that are found here, starting with a bunch of concept art. For the survivor side of things, there's concept art for the Plague Doctor mask, as well as this concept art for the ninja outfit. 
Then we have some renders of the electrical hand, as well as a pair of renders that were used on the game's Twitter page. Interestingly, for this second one, there's also an alternate version where the survivor on the floor is seen in a boxy outfit instead of the spacesuit. Then we got some concept art for several boxy skins including Cardboard, Vault, and Box Shibu. And then there's also a seemingly really early concept sketch for Boxy in general, where we can also see that someone crudely sketched in the top part of the box in red here. Next, there are two images of a render of Boxy, both which look pretty odd. In the first one here, Boxy has creepy big eyes and has an even more disturbing smile. Honestly, I think this is scarier than any of the other skins in the game. Then, basically the opposite of this, in this image, Boxy's smile was forcibly turned into a frown, and his eyes were shrunken down. Yeah, this just about matches how I feel about this picture too. Then next we got a mixed bag of various images. There's a nice close-up of Mommy Longlegs with a creepy smile, a screenshot of a few Portal Lounge lockers, some wacky scene with all three monsters, there's an awkward screenshot of Boxy, and then an even more awkward image of Huggy with a derpy face, and I guess his torso is just gone? And on the topic of Huggy, there's also this image of a model of a Wuggy crawling through one of the pipes, and this appears to be a different model than those that are used in the game. In the game, the models are basically just a smaller Huggy, and yeah, this one definitely seems lankier and seems to have a different face. Then next here are a handful of screenshots taken throughout several points in the game's development. And first, there's a screenshot of what looks to be from a really, really early point in development. At first I didn't think this was anything but a really early test map, but based on this name, Blockout Map 1, this was eventually turned into what became the Factory Map, so I guess this is just a really early version of that. Then there's this screenshot from a later version of the Toy Factory, and here, interestingly, on this wall, we can see references to two puzzle doors, as well as a puzzle position. In the current release of the game, the puzzles are all seen on these towers, so perhaps this was from a point in development where the puzzles were going to be placed on walls instead, and would feature a pair of doors. Then next up, there's a screenshot of the early version of the theater map, and here we can also see some stand-ins for the survivors and Huggy, but even more interestingly, on the side here we can see the wooden box with the red trim that I've covered in my previous videos. For those that haven't watched those yet, these are basically boxes that players could hide from the monster in, and these seem to have been replaced by the lockers. And then the last image we have here seems to be from a later point in development, as we have cosmetic hands, the final toy shoots, and the final UI graphics implemented. On the other hand though, here we also have the scrapped generator, the cut security system mechanic, it's seen in some test map, oh and we have not one, but two floating trains, so yeah, that's a thing. Also, this train seemingly has a slide running from its caboose down to the map, so perhaps this train was actually a playable part of the level here as well. Now, screenshots and images are fine and all, but now saving the best for last, this leak also has several video clips to check out, and man are they ever cool. I wasn't kidding in my previous video, this just might be the most insight into a game's development we've ever covered on this series. Just like the images, these videos appear to span from very early on in development to only a few days before the initial early access release. So, starting with some of the earlier stuff, the earliest video was made on January 10th, 2022, almost a whole year before the initial release of Project Playtime, and even several months before the release of Poppy Playtime's Chapter 2. So it looks like soon after Chapter 1 was released, the devs already started developing this multiplayer mode. This first video appears to be a very early proof of concept for the multiplayer experience as we can see incredibly basic placeholder models of each character, and we can also see both players' perspectives as one keeps grabbing at these cubes. We can also see that the grab pack hands don't even have a cable here and are just floating when launched. The next video was made just over a week later dubbed Funny Bugs, and here we can see the player launching several sets of hands at some cubes which I guess completely busted the physics and sent the boxes flying. Now that's cool in its own right, but if we slow down the footage we can also see a few more things in this test room. There's a pair of coils, a sunny buddy, a computer and a desk, as well as another computer and another desk, but this time there's a certain someone sitting behind it. And this is actually the taxi driver guy that was seemingly scrapped back in Chapter 1 of Poppy Playtime as I covered in my previous videos. No idea why he's here, but maybe you might know what he's watching on his computer. 
Either way, I thought it was super funny to see him implement it not driving a taxi as we thought, but here just chilling at his desk instead. Then recorded only a few days after this is a clip simply titled Better Quality, and I guess this was referring to the player models as once again testing the multiplayer aspects. Here a proper model for both the survivor and monster were implemented. This clip also shows off a bunch of the early taunts, and we can also see the old UI graphics, both of which we saw left over in Chapter 2 of Poppy Playtime. The rest of this clip also reveals another early test map with a bunch of boxes, a really early version of the train I don't think we've seen anywhere before, as well as a cafeteria room. This clip also shows off three little puzzles that each, when completed, would change one of these red lights to green, and once all three were completed, this door would also open. We can see a pair of pressure plate puzzles, as well as the gear puzzle, all of which we saw in the unused dev map left in the current build of Project Playtime. But unlike in the map that we saw, the gear puzzle actually seems to work here, and it's just how I predicted, you basically just had to bring the missing gear over to the machine. But for whatever reason, this didn't work in the map that's left in the game. Maybe the machine being halfway underground had something to do with it. In any case, this looks like a pretty sweet little test room. I wish this one had remained left over for us in the game as well. The next, recorded on January 31st, 2022, is a short video that looks to show off that an ability for Mommy Longlegs to climb walls was added. This seems to be a scrapped ability as, although Mommy Longlegs can extend a limb to zip to almost any surface, she can't just climb up walls like this, and I guess it's a good thing too. She doesn't need to be more broken than she already is. And speaking of the grapple ability, this doesn't seem to be from around the same time yet, but there's also this very short clip that appears to be testing it. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look like Mommy's model during this action was ready for this yet. And if we pause here, at whatever point in development this video was recorded, we can see a new yet still different from the final version set of UI graphics were used. We can see a checklist of the toy parts in the top left here with renders for each part, as opposed to up at the top center with simplified graphics as is seen in the current version. And the UI graphic for the special charge roll move here appears much different as it's just an upwards pointing arrow instead of a graphic of a survivor. Then next up, recorded in early February of 2022 is a clip where it appears that this is around when the first functioning train was added to the game. It still uses the old beta version of the train, but here the player could already enter and ride inside of it. We can also briefly get a look at another test map, and this looks to be map 3 as we saw with the unused thumbnail graphics earlier. This is, I think, the only other glimpse we ever get of this map, so unfortunately, aside from this and the thumbnail graphic, we can't really know what the rest of it looks like at this point. Then, a month later, a video titled First Session Ever was recorded, and this shows off a dev running two separate versions of the game on two separate Steam accounts, and as the name implies, this was the first ever true multiplayer session of the game. And whoever the developer is here seems to be pretty happy that it ended up working out. That is a successful connection. Interestingly, although the menu UI graphics actually appear to be the same as how they're seen in the current release, we can also see thumbnails of a few of the unused levels on the level select screen, and then we also see a very early and basic looking title screen with different menu graphics, a really basic placeholder survivor, and at this point the game still had a simple placeholder title of just Poppy Playtime Multiplayer Edition. Then almost two months after this point, we have another video where the game seems to have been much further along, and like I teased in my last video, this clip shows off a security camera mechanic that, as of right now, is scrapped from the game. Basically, a player, or monster in this case, could approach one of these monitoring stations and then could access the security cameras around the maps, basically adding some FNAF flair to this game. This mechanic doesn't really seem that useful in a Dead by Daylight asymmetrical style of game like this one from both the monster and survivor perspective, so I can see why this was removed, but nonetheless, it definitely seems like a decent amount of work was put into this mechanic. And yeah, the Bunzo army area is pretty creepy and definitely needs to be added in a future map. So there's around a 5 month gap from this video until the next one that's dated, I guess since this was around the time that Poppy Playtime Chapter 2 was released. So now let's check out a few clips that are left undated in this leak. First is this short clip where we can see a whole bunch of miscellaneous objects in a brightly lit outdoor environment. 
We got some floating boxes and balls, what looks like some sort of distillery machine, the T-posing metallic survivor, as well as some sort of reflective globs moving towards this mirrored surface. This clip is a bit short to really get a sense of what exactly is going on here, but I guess just based on all the reflective surfaces and how they seem to actually be reflecting the map, this might have been a map for testing lighting and ray tracing in the game. And the metallic globs actually seem to be Mommy Longleg's spiderweb shots as we can see the meter deplete as they're used. On that note, we can also see more of the early UI graphics that I mentioned earlier, and although the icon for the spotter move appears to be the same, the webshot graphic is a bit different, and also it looks like the heart counter was once in the top right instead of the bottom left of the screen as is seen in the release version. Next is a short clip featuring the wooden red box and the ability to open it before hiding inside of it, and then there's also a goofy clip of some players spinning around really fast in some chairs with Matt from IT here changing colors every once in a while too. There aren't any chairs like this in the game to interact with, but maybe this was part of the security camera mechanic where the player could sit in one of these chairs. And yeah, I absolutely want chair spinning like this to return as a lobby waiting area mechanic. Next is a really weird clip, as it appears to show the player playing as both a survivor and Huggy at the same time, as the player uses the grab pack to grab another survivor, before swinging at it with Huggy's hands. The grab pack also seems to have a cooldown, so maybe this was used as a test for implementing Huggy's charge move or something like that. Also, this video seems to show off even earlier UI graphics, as here Pi and J are used as placeholders for the special moves. And if you have a keen eye, you might recognize these symbols as being the same ones that are used in the Simon Says minigame in Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. Next, in addition to just a quick look at an early version of the Wuggy Pit, or Wulog as my pal Spiff calls it from the Survivor tutorial stage, there's a pair of short clips where we can see the developers were messing around with the size of these survivors. In the first one, we can see Huggy carrying around a comically large fella, and then the second clip features a really small guy. He's trying his best, okay? Also, in the clip with the massive survivor, we can see our first look at an early graphic for the mini Huggy move, and here we can also see an early placeholder for the grapple bars. The last pair of undated clips are both pretty short, this time showing off what I can only describe as a swarm of bees. And the second of these clips is even scarier, as the bees were now replaced with cat bees instead, and at this point I have no idea what this is for, but it's hella unsettling. Nothing like this is currently seen in the game, but if I was to speculate, at least the bees in this first clip might have been a hazard or something that was meant for the dark outdoors map. And wow, what a segue, as next we have three clips recorded on September 14th, 2022, the first of which here appears to take place in that outdoor map. Titled simply Old 2, here we can see some of the first recorded footage of an actual match taking place in this folder. Oh, and here, the photorealistic grass texture we saw in the early theater map is used a whole bunch, and at this point, it seems like only the two-hand generators were implemented as puzzles. What I wasn't ready for, though, was seeing a large T-posing mommy longlegs chasing the players around. This is definitely giving me flashbacks to the Huggy Jumpscare test room from Chapter 1. The clip later cuts to after the players were able to power up enough generators to then exfil on the train, and hey, there's the win cube that we saw left over in Chapter 2, and it looks like it functions just like we expected. It's so awesome to finally see how all of these objects were meant to be used in developing this game. Next we have Old 1, and like I teased in my previous video, this shows off an early lobby screen where players would pop up as they joined. And here is where the lobby background object that's left over in the current release of the game was used. And we, once again, get to see another unused thing used here as we finally get to see the old monster select screen in action. We've seen this unused and non-functional all the way back in Poppy Chapter 2 and now more recently in the current release of Project Playtime. But it's awesome to finally see this working as we thought it would. And just like we saw in this box in Chapter 2, here only a Happy Huggy and T-Posing Mommy Longlegs are present, so I guess Boxy wasn't implemented at this point in development just yet. Then after this screen, the game loads into the cheery train station area, so we also get to see a brief glimpse into what it looked like. 
Interestingly, despite being recorded at a later date as some of the clips we've already covered, this clip uses the very old UI graphics for playing as Huggy. Anyways, this map looks really small, bright, and wide open, so it seems like it's really hard to hide from the monster here. If this map ever does get implemented into the game, it's gonna need some serious overhauling, but I think a bright map would be cool to shake things up from the rest of the darker ones. And lastly, for the clips dated on this same day is New 1, and this appears to take place in the early version of the theater map. And furthermore, this appears to use the objects that we found out of bounds under the map there, so pretty cool to see those used here too. You can also see a non-functioning mini Huggy that was added around this time, and it looks like the developers were testing Huggy's in-game animations at this point as well. Oh, and once again, the middle finger emote returns, meaning that this was cut from the game within like the last three months. I don't know, I have a really strong feeling that we'll see this added into the game someday. Between this time and the next clips, we can see a few animation tests for both Huggy and Boxy. These include both of them just walking, Huggy running, as well as a test of Boxy's jump scare animation where he's seen chomping on a survivor's neck before slamming him to the ground. Then the next clip is dated November 23rd, so only like three weeks before this game was released, and only about a month before I'm making this video. And this short clip shows that the final version of the monster selection menu was implemented and the much scarier model of Huggy was added instead of the smiley one used before. And now, nearing within a week of the game's early access release, well, at least when it was initially supposed to release, there's three more clips that were recorded on December 1st, 2022. Being so close to the release, there's no longer anything cool from earlier in the game's development here, but rather we get some pretty cool cinematic looks at Mecha Mommy long legs, the hot pack and hands, as well as the whole skeleton outfit with the skeleton pack and hands as well. Honestly, I think this leak is one of the craziest things I've gotten to cover on Lost Bits. I thought leaving behind a whole beta build in Chapter 2 of Poppy Playtime was the most wild thing, but hey, here we are. We basically got an inside look into the entire development history of this game, from its early beginnings of just barely being a multiplayer game, to where it is now. And it was especially awesome to see all of the unused stuff that we've been covering over the past few months, and how they were once implemented in developing this game. I don't know if we'll ever get as deep of an insight into a major game's development like this ever again, but I certainly hope so, because this was an absolute blast for me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and big shoutouts to you if you've made it to the end here. I think even if you're not a fan of the Poppy series, there was a lot to appreciate here from a behind-the-scenes and game development perspective, so I hope you enjoyed. If you did, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.